Hi, this is Robin DeBray and I'm going to talk today about now how you can not only salvage old stepper motors from scanners or printers, but you can actually salvage the stepper motor driver as well. Okay, so this is a, a circuit board from an old scanner. Um, this is another circuit board from an old scanner. You can tell this one is quite old because it's got the, um, the printer ports on there rather than uh, this one is actually a little bit newer. It's got the USB. Okay, and over here we have a Papilio, which we're using to um, send the four signals into the stepper motor and then here we have the stepper motor which I added some tape to so you can actually see it turn without going cross-eyed. Okay so um, as you can see this has a, a nice switch on it this one it's got a 5 volt regulator up here and it's got a 12 volt regulator down here um, that goes into there's memory here that it uh, that was used to um, store the signal as it came in, I guess. There was the, the main chip right here and I removed that so it wouldn't potentially interfere with signals. Um, and then over here we have a Darlington array uh, and then this was the port going out to the actual stepper motor. Now anytime you're reversing these, the, the thing with stepper motors is they take um, y your your microchip here will, will send 5 or 3.3 .3 volt signals or whatever and the stepper motor usually requires something like you know 9 or 12 or 24 volts even to run it so um, you do not want to have 24 volts come into your microchip because uh, that smells funny uh, so what they do is they use a thing called a Darlington array usually not always but um, that's basically just a, um, a double transistor things so it protects the, the chip and it um, you send electricity into it and then when the chip fires this at 3.3 or 5 volts, this will, in a separate circuit almost, um, send higher voltages like 12 volts into the stepper motor and it protects you um, going backwards. This is a ULN 2003, which is um, a fairly common one to use nowadays. Um, this one over here is similar setup, but um, it actually uses uh, a Toshiba uh, Darlington array. If you're not sure what these are, and usually you won't be, um, what you do is you just find the number on here and go to uh, datasheetcatalog.com and uh, type that in and that's a real good resource for figuring out um, what these chips actually do. And you can type any of these chips in, they have basically everyone in the world in there, it's great. Um, this one's a little bit of a different setup, it's a five wire stepper motor, uh, which means this has a central tap. So. Uh, in a stepper motor, they're like basic DC motors, except um, a DC motor, as it as it will spin, um, you it actually changes what magnets are firing, and that will cause it to spin more, and that automatically changes. It has a little brush or a hall effect or something like that. But a stepper motor is a little different because uh, you manually turn on and off the different magnets in the motor, and that's why you need four wires. Um, so a four, or at least four wires. So a four-wire stepper motor will turn one set uh, forward, and then the next set, you know, forward. Then the first set backwards, and then the second set backwards, or something like that. And and it causes the motor to turn. A five-wire one does the same kind of thing, but all the electricity comes or goes back through uh, a, a center tap. Sometimes they have two center ones, so um, you don't have to have a, a reverse current. You can just do forward, forward, but it comes it comes to the same thing essentially. Okay, so these are five wire stepper motors and those are easy to tell because they have five wires on them. Um, if you want to figure out what pins do what, there's lots of resources on the internet but basically measure the resistance and you can tell which ones are tied to the center and which ones are tied to each other. Um, and you can also experiment a fair bit and it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, okay, so once you found out this, the where the wires come in, you follow the traces back and eventually you'll find some kind of Darlington array almost every time and that's here and that's here and as you're going back towards the chip often there'll be vias that go through the board that allows the signal to go from the top of the board to the bottom of the board but um, you can actually hijack those and stick wires in them and then cut the circuit back here however or remove the microchip like I did and uh, then you'll actually have direct access to the 5 volt activation pins on this side and that's what we did here um, if there are no vias like there was in this case you can actually solder wires directly to the pin heads here and use um, hot glue. This is definitely a very permanent setup here but actually it <clears throat> works a lot better than you would think it works. Um, then uh, I just put some um, heat shrink tubing here, a little bit of 
uh, and a header so it's kind of easy to access. Uh, the, one of the things, these vias are very small, so what you can do is you can take those little wee ceramic capacitors and stick them through through the bottom and then push them all the way up and that's what these kind of legs are here is their capacitors come from the bottom and then of course you solder that in and cut off the capacitor heads and throw those away. Um, the reason you want to probably do that is because those are actually thin enough to use and they're fairly strong wire unless you have such wire that obviously use that. Um, okay, so um, we'll do a little demo here. Uh, what we have is these four wires going into the papilio and the papilio code here um, you can see just basically says uh, with, this is just four steps one two three four and um, we're using high torque here you can look up on the internet again the different configurations of this, but basically this means two magnets will be going off at any time and you can see the sequence they go in um, and uh, sometimes these these are positive triggered it's sometimes negative triggered so you you want to watch for that but when you're doing high torque with four wires it actually doesn't matter obviously just that'll change the direction it goes okay um, so we'll we have this one not plugged in yet here so I will plug this in and as you can see the motor is turning here okay and one of the problems on the papilio is that it's super fast so you actually want a real large delay in there surprisingly large I don't know if fast is a problem, but it's one of the things about the Papilio that always surprises me. Okay, so that's running off this one, and you can see the power is coming in, and again we get a free power supply, 5 volt regula uh, regulator. Um, there's actually a, a LM257 there, I think that's regulating the, volt, uh, the current. Um, and this one's a little different, it drains through this really high re big resistor here. Um, there's different ways of doing it, obviously, and this is one of them. So what we're going to do now, we're going to unplug this, and we're going to plug that into this one. Hopefully this works while I'm holding a camera. And we're going to unplug all of these, and we're going to remember that's brown, blue, red, green. Alright, red, green, bad sign. Okay, we're going to come back here, and again, this doesn't really matter the order as long as it stays the same. Uh, it will, of course, affect the direction, but this is just a demo. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get these in with one hand here. Yes, I'm not. Okay, one more to go. And probably I have these wrong. Alright, we're back. Uh, it ends up that the wires were in the right order, as you probably were able to notice, but um, I had forgot to plug the motor in, so once that gets plugged in, obviously it works better. This one's really nice, it has a switch. And away we go. And this is at high torque, so, uh, well, I guess our paper is spinning, but you can see here that it's very hard to hold the motor there. All right, next time.